welcome to primes squares and cubes um, just before we start a quick reminder that there is a note chapter available for this video just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video okay so we're going to start with a definition a prime number is a number with exactly two factors itself and one now you should have already seen what a factor is, um, so we're just going to go straight into this. Um, and I'm going to show you a way of generating the prime numbers between 1 and 100. And so we're just going to follow the instructions on the right hand side. Um, first of all, cross out the number 1. Circle the number 2, then cross out all other numbers in the 2 times table. So we'll put a circle around the number two and we'll cross out everything else which is in the two times table. Okay, so then circle the number three and cross out all other numbers in the three times table. So we'll put a little circle around the number three and we'll take out numbers that are in the three times table. Now you notice that some of these are already highlighted. Um, we have six and 12, um, but the other ones we need to go through and cross out. So three, six, nine, 12. Okay, so then um, the four times table is already uh, crossed out. So uh, because that was in the two times table. Um, so next we're gonna go to the five times table circle the number five and continue to get rid of everything in the five times table again you'll notice quite a lot of these are already colored in and finally we are asked to uh, then circle the number seven and cross out the other numbers in the seven times table um, now this one you've got to just be very careful the seven times table is often people's least favorite uh, times table so we just need to check as we go through that we're definitely just counting on seven spaces at a time. So 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, or 49 is the first one we need to colour in, 56, 63, 70, 77, 84, 91, 98. And we're done. And so what that has actually done is it's meant we've left with just these numbers here and they are very special because they only have two factors themselves and one and those numbers are our prime numbers now there are a lot more prime numbers again go on into infinity um, just like all the rest of our numbers um, but these are just the ones between 1 and 100 and there are quite a few the reason that we know that they are prime numbers is we've actually said um, by colouring in the others we've identified anything which is in another times table. So everything in this column here um, from 4 all the way down to 94, well they're all in the 2 times table. So we know straight away that they cannot be prime numbers. Now it will be expected that you can just recall a lot of these prime numbers. Generally, it will be helpful if you knew all of the ones up to 30. If you can just spot those in a list, that would be great. And so we have the number 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23 and 29. Those ones there are the ones you're most likely to come across. Um, but the others it is important that you know how to check whether a number is prime and um, that would be can you divide it by any other number so um, if I asked you is 66 a prime number well straight away you can say no it's in the six times table it's in the three times table it's in the two times table um, you've got lots of evidence there that it's not a prime number next we have a square number and that is the result of multiplying a number by itself and what I've put here is a little diagram of how we can find square numbers. And basically a square number is anything which can be made by using square tiles. So if we can make a square from square tiles, we can make a square number. And so our first one is just a one 
by one square. So one times one is one. We used one square to make that larger square. In the second one, I've used two squares by two squares to make a larger square. So I did two times two, and I had one, two, three, four squares. So four is a square number. The next one, three by three. Well, in total, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares, because three times three is nine. Nine is a square number. Now we can keep doing this. If we went with the four by four, four times four is 16. We've used 16 little squares to make a larger square, so 16 is a square number. Now obviously it wouldn't be very helpful for us to have to draw those diagrams every single time. And so it would be more useful if we just had a list. And here it is. Um, these are our square numbers. One times one can be written as one with a little two above it as a power. That little two just means squared. So one squared equals one. Two times two is two squared, which is four. Three squared, nine. Four squared, 16. Five squared, 25. Six squared, 36. Seven squared, 49. Eight squared, 64. 9 squared, 81. 10 squared, 100. Beyond this point is where our times tables are probably not quite as, uh, possibly not quite as strong. Um, so we just need to remember these numbers in particular. 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. 14 squared is 196. And 15 squared is 225. Now you are expected, um, based on the GCSE, to, um, to know all of those 15 square numbers and to be able to recognise them at any point. So you should be able to recognise the answer to 9 squared is 81. You should also be able to recognise that 196 is 14 squared. Now all things in maths have opposites, so we've just squared some numbers. So what would be the opposite of squaring a number? Well, the answer to that is square root. Okay, so a square has a symbol here of a little two as a power. A square root has a little tick symbol. And what that tells us is that if we square the number eight, we get the answer of 64. But if we square root the number 64, we get eight. A square root is basically asking what number have you squared to make that number. So I squared 8 in order to get 64. And finally we have a cube number. And this is the result of multiplying a number by itself and by itself again. And we can represent this one by using cubes. It's where the word name comes from. Um, so if we have little cubes and in this case, this is a cube which is 1 by 1 by 1. Well, if I wanted to know the volume of that cube, it would be 1 times 1 times 1. And 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 is a cube number. Now, for the next one, I want to know how many little cubes have made up this shape. So that is a 2 by 2 by 2 shape. And so 2 times 2 times 2. If we count them up, we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4 for 2 times 2. But we'd do that twice because we have two layers. So 4 times 2 is 8. If we do the same again with the 3 by 3 by 3. Well, that would mean I'm doing 3 times 3 times 3. So we can take this in a couple of steps. 3 times 3 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that is 9. But that would have to be multiplied by 3 because there are 3 layers going backwards. And 3 times 9 is 27. And so 27 is a cube number.
Now again, we don't want to have to draw those uh, diagrams out every time. So what we do want to know is a quick list of the important uh, cube numbers for us to recognise. And so they are 1 cubed, and in this case the cubed symbol is this little 3. And basically it just means that I've done 1 times 1 times 1. There are 3 of them. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, and 5 cubed is 125. Now those 5 are very important, they're the 5 that you're expected to know, plus the final one, 10 times 10 times 10 is 10 cubed, which is 1000. And just like with the squares, we have a symbol for cube and we also have a symbol for the reversal of it, the cube root. And this time it has the same tick symbol, but this time with a little three, just to tell us that we are doing the cube root. And so if we think about the number two, if I cube it, well, two cubed is eight. And so the question of the cube root is, which number have I cubed to make eight? Well, I cubed two. And so the cube root of eight is two. And so we come to the exam question. And this was on the Edexcel paper in June 2018, and it was foundation paper two. Now that means it is a calculator paper, so we could use calculators if we were struggling with our times tables. Um, but in this case, let's try and go without it. So write down all the prime numbers between 20 and 30. Now one way of going about this is to actually write down all of the numbers between 20 and 30. So if we do that, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. And we want to check which ones are prime. So the way to check if it is prime, can it be divided by something other than itself or one? So 20, is it in another times table? Well, 20 is in the 10 times table, so it is not prime. 21, is that in another times table? Well, that is in the three times table. So it's not prime. 22, is that, um, is that a prime number? Is it in any other times table? Well, it's even, so it is in the two times table. 23, is it in any other times table? Well, it, can it be divided by two? No. Can it be divided by three? Well, that would be 21 and 24, so that doesn't work. Can it be divided by five? No. Can it be divided by seven? Well, that would be 21 and 28. And so that is our sign, 23 is a prime number. 24, even, so we can get rid of that one straight away. 25, well, it ends in a five, so it's in the five times table. 26 is even. 27, now 27, is that a prime number? Well, is it in any other times table? It is in the threes, it's in the three times nine, so that is not a, a prime number. 28, again, it's even. So 29, is 29 in any other times table? Can it be divided by two? No. Can it be divided by three? Well, that would be 27 and 30. So that is, uh, it's not in the three times table. Can it be divided by five? Well, it doesn't end in a five or a zero, so it's not in the fives. Can it be divided by seven? Well, seven would be 21, 28, 35. So it can't be divided by seven. So there's our proof. It is a prime number. And finally, 30 is an even number. It's in the 10 times table, it's in the three times table, lots of times tables, so definitely not prime. So all of the prime numbers between 20 and 30, there are actually only two. It's 23 and 29. Then Catherine says, two is the only even prime number. Is Catherine right? You must give a reason for your answer. Well, actually, this comes down to one very important thing about prime numbers, and this is entirely true. Two is the only even prime number. Two is very special in that case. It is the only even prime number, and the reason it's the only even prime number is that 
every other pro uh, even number is in the two times table. And so Catherine is correct because all other even numbers can be divided by two. And because it can be, they can be divided by two, it means they cannot be prime numbers.